So you're learning geometry nodes and you want to make something cool fast? Well, great, here's a video. If you want to get the blend file, it's in a link in the description, so check that out if you'd like, and let's get into it. So, open Blender, select the cube, Control i to select everything else, X to delete, click and drag up here to create a new window, set that to geometry node editor, N to delete that frame or to hide that frame, and new to create a new geometry nodes modifier. First thing we're gonna wanna do is instance the cube onto its own points. And so we'll use an instance on points node for that with the cube geometry input in both the points and instance inputs. So we get these four cubes and we're gonna repeat this a bunch of times in a sort of recursive manner. And we'll wanna scale down each time. So by half, so scale by 0.5. So if we add in a repeat zone to make this repeating action we can hook in our input geometry here and then we'll always want our input geometry to be the points so we'll keep that but then we want the output of this instances node to be the instance input and so then each time so we'll have this hook this into the output so now you can see so at an iteration of zero we get nothing or I mean we get this cube and then with one, you'll get um, that single cube instanced on the points of the cube. And if you do it again, then we get these four cubes instanced on the four vertices of the original cube. And we want to retain the last level, except for the zero level, which is just the individual cube. And we'll use a join geometry node for that. So if you pop that in there, and you just join this geometry with a new geometry and then hook that into our output. At zero, you'll get nothing unless we hook this in here. So let's do this for demonstration purposes. So at zero, you get the original cube. At one, you get nothing because I did something wrong. And that's because this actually goes in here and instances goes out here. And then at the second iteration, you'll get this and this and this. If you keep adding, you'll start to see this cool fractal geometry, which is pretty sweet. But we're going to want to do more to it. So if we just go back down to three iterations, because that's just what we're going to do for this animation, what we want to do is rotate each instance based off of, well, I mean, it's just going to rotate relative to the point that it's being instanced on. And we're going to use the normal vector of the instance points as a driver for the rotation axis. So if we add in a normal attribute node, we're going to align a rotation to that vector, that normal vector. So we'll use the align rotation to vector node with the normal as a vector input. We'll pop this into the rotation output. And we're going to set, we're going to keep the pivot at auto and we're going to set this to X. So now you can see this animation happening. We're going to view it from this side, so looking down the x-axis in the positive direction. And we're going to animate this factor. So this factor can go above 1. It could be 100. And then as you move this, you can see this animation happening. And we want to do that based off of the scene time. And we have a node for that. So make one of those, pop it into factor. Maybe it's a bit fast, so we can use a math node set to divide, and we'll just divide by two. So that's a nice animation speed. But to make this animation a little bit cooler, we want to join each of the geometries from previous frames with the new geometry, so we get a sort of trailing effect. And we'll use a simulation zone for that. So add in a simulation zone. Uh, we'll use nothing as an input because it'll start with nothing. Pop that into the output. And then just put a single join geometry node in there. And then take the output of this geometry in there. And then if you press play, you get all the geometry added together. But it just stays in one spot. That's kind of boring. So what we're going to do is we're going to move it back along the x-axis over time. We'll also scale and rotate it. And so the way we'll do that is by adding a transform geometry node right in here. So all the old geometry will get moved back. If we add something here, let's 
go back by two each frame, and the new frame will be where it started. So now we get this trail, which is pretty cool. And if we look at it head on, you don't really see much, and that's because we need it to scale up a bit to move out. So let's scale by something small like 1.01, .01. and if you press play, you can see it moving out over time. Now pretty quickly, you're going to get a lot of new geometry. So before we do anything else, let's add in a delete geometry node. And let's delete the geometry if its x position is greater than a certain amount. So we'll say compare greater than, and we'll take a position node, not that one, a position node, and separate x, y, z. So if the x is greater than, let's say, 128, then it goes away. And it's not working because these are actually instances, not points. So make sure to set the domain on the delete geometry node to instance. And now you'll see once it hits 128, it will disappear. Something weird is happening, though. And the weird thing is that we actually don't want this first piece of geometry. And this cube is not getting deleted because it's it's not an instance. Everything else is an instance. So just unhook that. Um, and the reason for that is because if I can just view from the front, without that center cube, we can kind of see these. Uh, you just see a little bit more. And if you add that into the beginning, then the center is always occupied by that cube. So it's just not as cool of an animation. So make sure to unhook that, and then all the geometry will get deleted at 128. If you just view from the front, you see this pretty cool animation. But it could be a little bit cooler if we added some rotation. So let's add just a little bit of rotation in along or about the x-axis, and you get that. You could make it more. You could make it opposite. I like seeing it kind of change like this, and so I want to animate it in this oscillating manner. And we can do that with a scene time node and a math sine node, so a sine wave node. So if we add in scene time, take those seconds, and then math sine node. And then we, we only want the x-axis, so we'll combine x, y, z. And we'll do Euler 2 rotation. Wow, it is changing and oscillating based off of time, but a little bit too much. So this is going between negative one and one. So we'll just scale that down by multiplying by something small, like, I don't know, 0.5. My phone keeps dinging, and it's going to do that. So 0 0.025. Yeah, let's just do that, and you can kind of see it oscillating, which is pretty cool if I may say so myself. And then we'll multiply the scene time by something like 0.25 to make the effect a little more subtle. And that's what we'll go with for the rotation. At this point, we pretty much have our final animation. But we're, what we'll do is we'll change the instances that get put on the points to something other than just a simple cube, just to make it a bit cooler. So to demonstrate that, uh, we'll just change the input here. So if I take that out, Obviously, you'll see nothing. Uh, but for an example, let's just use an icosphere. Put that in here. And then you just get different geometry. Um, and that's pretty cool. But I kind of like the cubes better. So I'm just going to like make a spiced up cube. So I want to add some edges to this, some geometry to all the, the edges of the cube. So the way that I'll do that is I will take my original geometry uh, to curves. I'll convert it from a mesh to a curve. And then from a curve to a mesh, curve to mesh, so that you can use a profile curve, in this case, just a simple quadrilateral as the input. And this quadrilateral, ra quadrilateral is way too big, so let's set it to like 0 0.05. 0 0.05. And then you'll see, actually, in this case, we just have the wireframes. And that 
it's like hard to hard to see what's even really going on. Um, so we'll then join that with our original geometry, and then you can see that we have the outlines there, but we want it to be a little bit bigger. So let's set that to point one. Uh, I think ultimately let's do point two five. So then, I think that looks pretty cool. I like on the edges here how you see the wireframes in the echoes. But what I don't like is how at the points where they meet, there's nothing there. And so we'll add a little bit more geometry into our instance geometry. And we'll do that with an instance on points node. And so we'll instance on these points a little cube. So I'd make cube node, put that here, and we'll set that cube to be, I don't know, like 0.333. Um, and we'll set shade smooth. Or I'll add that in a second. Well, we'll just add that in there. And then we'll also join that geometry in here. Yeah, so now we have these little cubes here. Uh, these could be spheres, but for efficiency's sake, I'm just going to use cubes and set them to shade smooth. You could not do that, and that would look fine, but I'll set it shade smooth. Because I want them to look like little spheres when we render, and setting shade smooth will approximate that. And they're small enough in the render that you won't really be able to tell. So things get a bit slower when you do this because you've got quite a bit more geometry. But I think it's worth it for the end effect. Lastly, we'll want to add two more nodes. First, a set material node for the instances. We'll just set that to material. And you'll see it's lagging a bit. And this starts to happen once you get all these instances all added together. But if we add in a realize instances node at the end and convert that to geometry, the simulation might run a bit slower, but once you've got the geometry, everything is nice and fast. And that allows us to move on to lighting and rendering. The material is going to be a super simple glossy BSDF with a roughness of 0.25. Then we'll set up an orthographic camera looking down the x-axis, pointing, uh, you know, just set the scale so it fits everything in there. Then add three directional lights with one white, one blue, I mean, red, white, and blue, I guess. Very American of me. Um, and then just set the animation, make it look good, make it look how you like, and hit, hit render and render it. And go away from your computer, go outside, smell the air, feel the wind. Don't think about technology because we love it so much, but it also destroys us, but also builds us up. The never-ending chaotic duality of doing art, but doing art with computers. I'm not deep, but I'm here to teach you Blender. So since that just about covers it, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And above all, I hope you had fun. Until next time.